because no one ever gets out of a, of a mental institution for the criminally insane. Are you kidding? The only way you get out of there is uh, in the graveyard. Thank but God. God can do anything. Yes. Anything. So he came out at 21 mm -hmm. and he met you. Yes. And how was he when he came out? Well, he had met people who had taken him to church and kind of showed him, you know, society. I mean, when you're 14 and you're put away and you don't know how to react to people. You don't no, know how to be a church person. And all you've ever known is torture and horrors. Right. So they were good. There were several steps God gave him. Um, chances to go to Bible school, chances to get to know people. And each one of these situations caused him to be just a little bit closer to being the person that he should be. Once I met him, he was uh, working under a pastor and um, getting his credentials to be a minister himself. And so he had come quite a ways by that time. But uh, God still did a wonderful thing between us. We started singing together. Music was always our Oh, and Big they thing. are great singers. You, your <laughs> daughter, son-in-law, and he mm -hmm. were just wonderful singers. And musician. Could play anything, Dorothy. Just anything he put his hands on. But isn't that amazing? Here he goes through, and you're going to want to get this book, Pavilion Number 21. Mm -hmm. Here he goes through all the horrors of a child. Mm -hmm. And you think your life's a mess? You think you've had a hard time? This little boy gets ripped away from his family then gets into a bad home, gets ripped away from his sister, mm -hmm. and told nothing but horrible things. And then he gets into like the worst place of all, mm -hmm. where they do all these scientific testings on right. him. Right, right. That is amazing, and most people only get out of there except by the grave. Right, there's no, there's no hope, because see, he was a ward of the state, which means he had nobody to talk to him, for him, you know, to the authorities. He had no hope. God was the only one who got him out. And it was amazing how he got in that place in the first place. Right. The people had money, bought off people, and mm -hmm. that's where I'm he sure, got there. I'm sure. They were wealthy enough to buy off anybody. Did they ever see him in later years? The mother didn't, but the, the adopted mother didn't. But the adopted father did, and we went back to, and made peace with him. He's, my husband stood up and even apologized in front of a room full of people for everything he had done. And I thought, you, they should apologize to you. But he had a heart to say, you know, I forgive you. I want you to forgive me. I want to start all over. And God gave us that chance with his dad. And did his dad accept him? Yes. Yes, it was, it was good. Wow. Well, this is a book you're going to want to get and read. And it's my friend. And he went through this. And I know you'll like it. It'll change your life. We'll be right back. Janet Lee presents her husband, David Lee's life story in Pavilion 21. This heart-wrenching and heart-touching story of David's early life contained within the pages of this book tell of the horrors of an adopted Jewish immigrant boy who was put in a mental institution and the key was thrown away. Through this incredible experience, David discovered the unconditional love of God that transformed him into a man of God. Pavilion number 21 is available for this special buy-the-book offer of 10 99. Simply call 888-725-8033 or log on to our website, buythebook.tv. Simply call 888-725-8033 or log on to our website, buythebook.tv. Request offer number 235B. Buy the book today. If you would like to receive your copy of today's edition of Buy the Book, please be sure to call 888-725-8033 and ask for today's offer number on the screen. DVDs are $14.95 plus shipping and handling and come with four total episodes per DVD. Order your DVD of Buy the Book today and call 888-725-8033. Welcome back to Buy the Book. And we left this off the last time, but there's talk of making this a movie. Mm -hmm. This would mm -hmm. be a great movie. It would be. It's got a lot it's in there. It's got a lot <laughs> in there, and it mm -hmm. would be a great movie. So pray for that, because that would be 
changing many people's mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. Well, the next one, I really like this one mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I like all your books. This is Janet Lee, my friend. I like her books because she writes them with such passion. But this one here, and the miracle goes on. And I have read some of the miracles that you've had. And I was telling one of them on the way to this program. Were you? Yes. I was talking about the time when you were in a car with some friends and a truck was coming and cars were coming and you said. Okay. This is very exciting. There's a lot of different uh, on the road type miracles. But the one miracle uh, that I love to say, and I love this book because we put in it real things, Dorothy. They're not fictional. Uh -uh. They may sound fictional, but they're not. And if somebody doesn't want to believe it, that's okay, but it happened. It happened. And my husband and his friend were in the front seat, and my, my friend and I were in the back seat. Is this is the one you're talking about? Uh -huh. And we were coming up to, uh, well, we were in traffic. We couldn't move. Uh -huh. A truck was coming from a side road on my side, kind of, you know, how it comes on a side road comes uh -huh. into the mainstream and the friend that was driving saw him and he said he was coming at a fast rate of speed the first thing out of his mouth was please forgive me it's not my fault I can't do anything about it and we looked at him what the truck didn't stop he came right through our car and went right to on the other side and continued on but what happened to my friend and I what we saw is the whole car filled with light and we felt the sensation in our body of something whoosh but nothing hurt us just that feeling now you get this picture right yeah god moved steel and bodies and nobody got hurt except that when we looked back he said turn around and look at that guy who just went through us we did and the car was kind of bouncing you know the truck like like he had just went over something i don't know what he felt but god said it's not time and when it's not time it's not time and you can just say the name of Jesus when you don't know what else to say. You, just, you don't have time to say uh, anything else. To say Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. call upon him. Yes. He says, I'll deliver you in time of trouble. And he did. That thing went right through, through your vehicle. Mm -hmm. Well, one time that happened to me with a dog. There was this dog, a big dog. And I know that we hit him, but he wasn't there. I mean, we didn't feel a hit. We didn't. He was right in front of my car. I had to hit him. But he wasn't there because he just went through us. We mm -hmm. went through him or something happened, but that dog was fine. God can do that. He can move. See, to him, he made everything and all the molecules and everything. He just moves things. He's moved our car from one lane to another when we were going to hit a truck. He's done all types of fabulous miracles. We took 30, uh, about 35 years of miracles and put it in there because when David went to be with the Lord about seven years ago, one of the last things he said to me is, write that book. Tell people about the miracles God did for us. Don't let it die with me. He says, the miracle goes on. And that's why I named it that. And we spent years afterward talking to friends and getting all the facts, trying to remember all the details. You know how it is. But God did so many miracles through the years. He provided food. Oh, absolutely. I'll never forget this one time. We had this little piece of meat. And this whole bunch of people came over because my husband was so gracious to ask them to come over. And a lot of them came over all at <laughs> once. You know how it is. Oh, well, if you're ever in Texas, stop by, you know. <laughs> but we had this small amount of meat, and he just he says, don't worry about it. Invite them all to dinner. Sit them down. He went into the kitchen and started saying, in the name of Jesus, pounding that meat, and it stretched, and we fed everybody and had some left over. I, I, I mean, those, are, those are stories that you lived over and yes. over and over again because you dared to trust him. Didn't you have to go somewhere to minister and you came to this church and there was no food? That's right. Um, there was many times pastors would ask us to fill in for them when they're on vacation, which is okay. And we had a little trailer. We were pretty much independent. We'd pull up by the church and we were okay. Except that when they're on vacation, it's not quite the same as you can call them up and say, hey, pastor, I'm in town, you know, and they'll come over and check on you and see if you need anything. Well, we didn't even know who to call to say, come over and help us. We just pulled up next to the church and, okay, he left the 